Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Shirazi, a board certified dermatologist. Welcome back to my channel. It is officially fall, summer has ended. We are looking at post-summer skin rehab with sun damage and discoloration. Many of us may be noticing that on our skin and may be wondering, do I have melasma? Is the sun damage? Are these sunspots or are they age spots? Well, I want to break down four different types of discoloration and pigmentation that you may be noticing on your skin, but they're all different. They're not all equal. We treat them differently. And so I want to give you the lowdown on this type of discoloration and sun damage on our skin. So if you're wondering what type of brown spot or discoloration you have, you will want to listen to this video and be sure to share this with a friend. But before we get started, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe and comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, but before I go into detail of the four different types, let's talk about what makes our skin produce pigment. Well, melanin is something that is produced by our cells and it's usually a response to an injury or UV light that as a defense mechanism, we rev up our production of melanin, which is what gives the skin color. So somebody who has more melanin in their skin is gonna naturally have darker skin tones than somebody who's very fair skin. So this reactive phenomenon is a way to protect the skin and respond to things like inflammation, sun, you know, sometimes friction and rubbing can induce melanin production. And that is really where brown pigmentation comes from. And it can vary, it can look kind of purple, light brown, dark brown, and that all depends on how much melanin is being produced. So I wanna give you kind of a little bit of background on why we see discoloration and what's happening in the skin level. Number one, sun damage. This is the time of year that we really start to notice the toll that summer has taken on our skin. With being outdoors and the UV index being higher or traveling for vacation, we spend most of our times outside and on vacation during the season. So sun damage is basically to me is sort of like weathering of the skin. So you're not only getting brown spots, which are equivalent to melanin, and these are like freckles or lentigos, but you're also getting broken capillary. So you get this brown, red discoloration with loss of pigment in some areas. So the skin just looks very blotchy, uneven. I like to call it weathered, and that's because the sun does so many different things to the skin. Not only do we lose collagen and elastin, but we're also inducing more melanin as a way for the skin to protect itself from the UV rays. And that's really what tanning is. But with sun damage or sun spots, we get it in patches like these you know, little circles and they're, they can be uneven and it's almost like a mottled appearance. And in the midst of all that, some of them also have redness to it because the sun also induces broken capillaries. So you get this kind of red brown with some dropout of pigment on the face. What works the best for this type of discoloration are lasers and devices such as IPL or BBL, as you can see here in this video, that uses BBL, which is broadband light. Technically, it's not a laser, but it targets broken capillaries, it targets sunspots, and brings them to the surface of the skin. And over a course of a week or so, the redness gets better. The sunspots actually, they lift up, they come to the surface of the skin. I always say they look like coffee grains, like somebody went and stuck coffee grains on your face and they flake off usually over a week or two. Everybody's skin is a little bit different, but typically uh, the brown spots are actually easier to treat than the red blotches. The broken capillaries take more sessions for them to really fully be treated, whereas the brown spots, particularly the dark ones, are much easier to remove. Now, light freckles on dark skin is like my worst nightmare. That is the hardest type 
of sunspots to treat because the laser can't see light freckles as well as it can see dark freckles. So actually, dark freckles respond better to lasers and devices than light freckles. Other lasers are things like XLV, the V-beam laser. Those also help remove and clean up the sun damage and weathering that we see. Number two, age spots. Now you might wonder, okay, isn't that the same thing as sunspots? Yeah, technically I guess it can be, but to a dermatologist, age spots is more than just melanin. It's also accumulation of skin cells. So age spots tend to be thicker because they're not only made up of pigment, which is melanin, but they're also made up of skin cells. So they can be a little bit more challenging. Sometimes these lasers will get enough energy delivered by capturing the melanin in the skin and that it allows the age spot that's thicker to lift off. But oftentimes we may have to do an additional treatment right after the laser. Like I love to use good old fashioned cryotherapy to just get enough of the skin cells to lift off. Sometimes we have to use more ablative lasers that actually resurface the surface of the skin like a CO2 or an erbium to try to get those thicker age spots off. So they're not as easy as let's say the straight kind of pigment which is melanin in the skin. As you can see dermatologists can do a really nice job of removing even the largest age spots. It may take more sessions, we may need more time, but sometimes I also like to combine retinols or exfoliants along with in-office treatments to get these more stubborn age spots off. Number three, melasma. Melasma can be such a pain in the butt. It can be so difficult to treat. It's chronic. It's kind of like the diabetes of dermatology. And that means that we can never really cure it because some people are just more prone to melasma and once you get it, you, you kind of stays with you for a while, but we can treat it. So even though we can't cure it, we can treat it, which means that we can get it pretty nice and light and no one will ever know you have melasma, but it takes work. It takes work on your part. It takes work on the dermatologist's part. It's not an easy condition because it's so reactive. Like we can bleach out melasma but it just wants to come back as soon as a trigger is introduced. So let's talk about what it is and how it's different from sun damage. Melasma is sheets of pigmentation. So if you see sunspots, they're sort of these round kind of individual spots. Well, melasma is like a solid sheet and it's often referred to as the mask of pregnancy because it's a combination of sun exposure with estrogen, whether it's pregnancy or birth control pills or just hormones that you're on, can make you more prone to developing melasma. And although men can also get melasma, it's much more common in women because of the estrogen factor. So you see brown patches on the forehead, you can see it on the nose, the upper lip. So here are the biggest triggers. Number one, sun, UV rays. And I'm talking UVA rays, UVB rays, blue rays from the sun. So if you're on the screens a lot or you're sitting next to a window a lot, blue rays and UVA rays can still come through. And this is where sun protection comes in. It's so important. And in San Diego, we have so many people that, you know, have outdoor gyms and outdoor showers and we're outdoor pretty much all year long, which makes it even more challenging. So be aware of UV rays. And I'm not just talking, you know, being in direct sun, I'm talking just reflection of a light that is always around us, particularly in sunnier climates. Number two is heat. Melasma is also very responsive to heat. So all you hot yoga people that love to be exposed to extreme temperatures, if you have melasma, you might want to be careful or those infrared saunas, just something to wear, be aware of hot showers. Uh, other things are irritation. So if you are using these stronger prescriptions or you're trying to use multiple actives to help you know, treat the melasma, you can overdo it and that will backfire, which is why 
a simple skincare regimen with comprehensive products are so important when you're designing a treatment regimen for patients with melasma. So you really want to be careful about irritation, you know, anything that's friction and rubbing on the skin. So all you people that love those beauty tools, you know, those are all fun and games <laughs> until the beauty tools start to cause problems that friction and rubbing on the skin can trigger pigmentation. So how do we treat melasma? Well, in recent years, there's been great developments in really medical therapies for melasma because historically lasers and devices can actually make melasma worse. Yes, they can remove the melasma initially, but then it comes back with a vengeance. And so that is the challenge. The best lasers for treating melasma are things like PicoSure, Clear and Brilliant, a low, low energy halo or Fraxel. The key is low settings, but despite taking all the precautions, you still run the risk of 25% chance up to 50% chance of making melasma worse. So just be aware of that. I personally like to have patients on a medical regimen, a prescription regimen before even going near their skin with melasma because a lot of times, like I said, it can initially make it better, but then it gets worse. And recently we've been using tranexamic acid, which can be an oral prescription. Historically, it was for women who had really heavy periods, but we've discovered that it works amazingly well for people who suffer from melasma. It is such a game changer. And I personally love using tranexamic acid in the office, combining it with microneedling. I find that treatment actually works the best for melasma. It's simple and people are like, what, that's it? Just microneedling with tranexamic acid? Yes, because you don't run the risk of irritating the skin or you know, using lasers with that, which are light based and so they can make melasma worse. So in my office, we love that for melasma patients. Yes, it takes multiple sessions. I'm talking like three to five. But during your treatments, your in-office treatments, it's also really important that you follow your prescription regimen that I put you on, a regimen known as Skin Bright, if you are familiar with my office. We have a protocol called Skin Bright that does an incredible job of treating melasma. Listen to this patient testimonial. It is life-changing for people. This regimen that I had, it, it was amazing. I cannot say enough about this treatment with Dr. Rossi. Thank you so much, Dr. Rossi, for making my life better. She's so cute. I, I it, it just warms my heart. Honestly, this is what I love about my job. It is what I live for. It's what wakes me up in the morning and gets so excited to help people just make their lives better. I don't think people understand how distressing it is to have a skin condition because you, you can have hypertension, you can have you know, something that nobody else sees, but when it's on your skin and people see it, it can really take a toll on your mental health. So I love Skin Bright. It's very effective. If you're interested in learning more, I'll, I'll put their link down in the caption, check it out. So really medical therapy is definitely my go-to. And I cannot stress the importance of using sunscreen every single day. And you want to use a broad spectrum SPF. My personal favorite is Hydrotin BB because it's mineral based, so it's not going to irritate the skin. It has iron oxide, which helps block and attenuate highly visible blue rays that come through windows and screens and it gives you coverage so my melasma patients love that because they can put that on either under their foundation or i personally that's what i'm wearing right now i don't wear foundation i stopped wearing foundation three years ago when i developed this product it works so well and it is a three in one so it's a moisturizer and spf with a broad spectrum protection and it gives you coverage and that's not enough i usually tell people buy a bunch of hats they don't have to be expensive as long as they're wide brim you can find the visors that you can roll up put one by the door put one in your car put one in your bag put one wherever you know that you may be stuck 
heading outside without wearing a visor. This is particularly true when we are trying to put the melasma away, when we're trying to treat it to get it to a maintenance you know, factor. And, and particularly true you know, in the spring and the summer months when the weather's warmer, we're outside more. So really, really key. And I love the SPF powder brushes. I love Sunkist because it's so easy to reapply. I use it throughout the day because if you put it on in the morning, if you put SPF in the morning on, a lot of people are not going to listen to me when I say reapply your sunscreen before you go out in the afternoon because by the afternoon, it's probably not protecting you as well. But if, they, if I tell them, okay, use this powder, they're probably more likely to use it. So it's better than nothing. It doesn't give you as much protection as cream, but it's still better. And I like it better than the spray sunscreens. I find with the spray, you have to spray for a really long time and you're inhaling the fumes. But with a powder, it's, it's much easier to brush on. Plus, it soaks up moisture and sweat and oil and gives you coverage. But the powder also comes in clear. So if you don't want a tint, which some people don't because it gets on their clothes, you can just use the clear one. So this is highly recommended because it is going to help you achieve clearance much faster than if you are not using these measures. Number four, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. This is also known as PIH. Again, like we talked about at the beginning of this video, if you have any sort of reaction or disruption in the skin, whether it's a rash, a pimple, friction and rubbing, your skin will react with increased melanin production. This is particularly true with those that have darker skin tones. The darker the skin tone, the more likely and the more melanin that gets produced. And this can be a really tough condition to treat. For example, with acne and PIH, Every time you get a breakout, it leaves a stain. So if you keep getting breakouts, it looks like your acne is never clearing, but that's because, you know, it takes a while for that hyperpigmentation to go away. So the key to PIH is control what is giving you the PIH. So if it's acne, treat the acne because it's going to be much harder to get rid of the pigmentation if you're constantly breaking out. If it's eczema, treat the eczema. If it's, you know, psoriasis, treat that. If it's something that is, you know, rubbing and, and causing friction on the skin and that's what's giving you the pigmentation, you got to treat that. So really it's a reactive phenomenon that is a secondary effect. It's not really something that comes up on its own. It has to be triggered by inflammation, which is redness, swelling, you know, things that disrupt the skin. So what works great for this type of discoloration are Lasers, you can use BBL, IPL, V-beam laser, but my personal favorite, especially in dark skin, is bleaching creams. And skin lighteners such as hydroquinone, vitamin C, kojic acid, burberry, arbutin, emblica, all these help lighten the skin. Other ones I'll mention are niacinamide, retinols, azelaic acid. These are skin lighteners and brighteners, so they really do help hyperpigmentation. Now, depending on which one you use and what combination you use really depends on your overall skin care regimen because I highly favor multi-action, multi-active products. For example, Dermabrite pads, you can get them with or without hydroquinone, but they have vitamin C, they have arbutin, they have kojic acid, they have emblica, all these skin brighteners into one product. And azelaic 10 acid, which is a very gentle exfoliant, but also does a great job of lightening hyperpigmentation. This is particularly great if you have rosacea or sensitive skin. It isn't as strong as let's say hydroquinone or kojic acid, but it still does a great job and goes well with all the other actives. The one active I did not mention is glycolic acid. I love glycolic acid. It has a very potent brightening effect, but it can also be irritating. So you have to be careful with glycolic acid. So I hope that was helpful and that gave you some insight. If you're looking at your skin and wondering what type you have, it can be difficult or you might have a combination of things. So be sure to see a dermatologist. I'm happy to do a photo consult through the link in my bio. So check it out and check out Skin Bright 
for more information on pigmentation treatment and melasma. Thanks guys for tuning in. Until next time.